we want to simplify these square roots using complex numbers. Recall complex numbers are the numbers in the form of a plus bi, a is the real part, bi is the imaginary part, i equals the square root of negative one, and i squared equals negative one. For the first example, we want to simplify the square root of 48. 48 is not a perfect square, however, this will still simplify as long as 48 has a perfect square factor. If we recognize that 48 is equal to 16 times three, and 16 is a perfect square, we can simplify this very quickly. If we don't recognize this, we can always look at the prime factorization of 48. And let's go ahead and do that. For 48, let's start with eight times six. Eight is equal to four times two, where two is prime. Four is equal to two times two, which are both prime. And six is equal to two times three, both are prime. The prime factorization of 48 has four factors of two and a factor of three. Let's write the square root of 48 as the square root of the prime factorization, two times two times two times two times three. Every time we have two equal factors, we know we have a perfect square, meaning two times two is a perfect square here as well as here. The circled part will simplify, the part not circled will not simplify meaning the square root of two times two, or two squared, equals one factor of two here and here, which gives us two times two outside the square root, and we're still left with the square root of three. And since two times two is equal to four, the square root of 48 is equal to four times the square root of three. Again, this is a little bit longer way to simplify the square root, but it always works. And again, it would have been faster to recognize 16 is a perfect square factor of 48, and write the square root of 48 as the square root of 16 times three. And because the square root of 16 is equal to four, we have four square root of three much faster. But again, the first method will never fail. Next, we have the square root of 125. Again, 125 is not a perfect square, but it does contain the perfect square factor of 25. And again, if we don't recognize this, we can look at the prime factorization of 125. Let's go ahead and do that. 125 is equal to five times 25, five is prime, and 25 is equal to five times five. The prime factorization consists of three factors of five. Let's write the square root of 125 as the square root of five times five times five. Again, we're looking for a perfect square of factors of 125. Five times five is a perfect square. The square root of five times five or five squared is equal to one factor of five outside the square root, giving us five square root five. Notice for the first two examples, the square roots simplify to real irrational numbers, which are complex numbers when b equals zero and a does not. Next, we have the square root of negative 48. In this case, there is no real number squared equal to negative 48. This indicates this will simplify to an imaginary number. To better understand this, negative 48 is equal to 48 times negative one. Let's write the square root of negative 48 as the square root of 48 times negative one, which is equal to the square root of 48 times the square root of negative one. And we know from above, the square root of 48 is equal to four square root three, and the square root of negative one is equal to i, indicating the square root of negative 48 is equal to four square root three i. Notice here we have an imaginary number. Imaginary numbers are complex numbers where a equals zero and b does not. For the last example, we have the square root of negative 125. Let's write this as the square root of 125 times negative one, which is equal to the square root of 125 times the square root of negative one. We know the square root of 125 is equal to five square root five, Square root negative one is equal to i. The square root of negative 125 is equal to five square root five i. I hope you found this helpful.